Hello and welcome. I am Scarperlock and this is City of Heroes. We are with level 48 Liberty Lass, our brute who has 29 million XP earned and nearly, well, a little over 4 million. I was going to say nearly 5, but not, 4 and a quarter million XP to go to get to level 49. We have two levels left and we have just been offered a story arc, the Heroes Epic by Maria Jenkins, which is in Pretoria. Or we could potentially go to Crimson and do his storyline. And I guess we'll do Maria's, since we're here. And we need to repair a scanner, and this is going to take us into Pretoria a lot. So we'll leave it on plus two, because, um, because Pretoria is scaled a little bit harder than uh, the rest of Paragon City. I hope you guys are enjoying. Before I forget, I did want to mention something. Um, I'm a big fan of older TV shows, TV shows that were around when I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> one of my all-time favorite comedies is The Mayor Tyler Moore Show. And uh, so I've been watching it over the summer, like while I'm making dinner and stuff. And I'm in the seventh season. And I just noticed this today is because I had just done a recording, I guess yesterday. Where I, which would be the previous episode, I think, one or two before this, where I was talking about how um, there was a um, somebody who was giving writing advice, and he was talking about being careful not to take too much from how movies are done, because movies are fundamentally different from novels. And he talked about how there are a lot of people who want to write novels, and I don't understand this at all. I want to write novels, but I don't like to read. Like, why? Why would you want to write a novel then? That's like saying, I want to make movies, but I don't like going to the movies. Like, then w what would excite you about writing a novel then? Uh, but anyway, so I, I talked about this, how you have to read books in order to know how to write a book. And uh, so I was watching the Mary Tyler Moore show, and there was an episode where she's writing uh, sort of a pseudo-fiction. She's writing a story that's based on things that her grandfather did when she was a kid and um, she wants to maybe get it published and there is chimera so we have to defeat him but let's see if we can find the glowy first um, anyway ted baxter who's a goofball in the show he's the he's the anchor man and he's a bit of a an airhead played beautifully by Ted Knight. He's listening to this and he says, "Oh, I I want to I want to write a book too." Now oh, we're being ambushed. Looks like it. He says, "I want to write a book too." And one of the other characters says to him, "Don't you have to have read a book before you write a book?" <laughs> right? The idea that you shouldn't be writing when you don't do any reading. And I can't remember what Ted says in response, but it just made me think of what I was just talking about yesterday when I was recording, that there are people who think that they want to write a book even though they don't read. And I don't I like I don't understand that. Because why would you want to? Like what you're obviously not a fan. Oh boy, he's plus two and I didn't come in with the right inspirations. Um, you're obviously not a fan of books, so why do you want to write one? Um yeah, it's a little strange. But anyway, I, I, I just saw, thought I would mention that since um, I had just talked about it. So what I'm going to do here is head out. If I can find the exit. Where's the exit? Should be around here somewhere, no? I hate these outdoor maps. All right, I'm going to pause this here, guys. I'm going to try to find the exit. I'm going to go out, get the right inspirations, and then bring you back. All right, folks, we are back, and there is Chimera, and we are going to attack him. But first, we're going to turn on all of our buffs.
Man, I am debuffed like crazy here. Might not be able to beat him. Look at this. Is this from her? They're hitting me like crazy, as if I have no defense at all, even though I have defense. Alright, now we're doing some damage. So I, I don't know if she debuffed me or if he debuffed me. He's using claws, so he shouldn't have been able to debuff me that bad. Or no, not claws, he's using the sword. Alright, it must have been the seer or whatever who had me debuffed like that. Mission completed. That is our first level 50 mission, guys. It used to be the cap. That no matter whether it's plus or not, nothing went over 50. And that's why they couldn't let you change the difficulty setting back in the day. Alright, Maria, what have you got next for us? Heroes Epic Part 2, if the scanners are being jammed, we need to find the source. So we have to check on the dimensional scanners now. And I guess, you know, these missions often tend to have elite bosses in them instead of regular bosses. So I guess we need to make sure we keep ourselves inspirationed up. Or inspired, I guess. Keep ourselves fully inspired. Yeah, I like that. I've never actually said it that way, but that's a good way to describe it. We are not fully inspired, but we're about to be. Yeah, it's really weird that you can buy them, right? The the original thematic in-character idea of inspirations was almost like Benny's, right? Like, you, you do something great, and your character is inspired to greater levels of heroism by it. And it a little inspiration gets deposited in your tray, right? In fact, if you go back to Atlas Park... Sometimes when you rescue hostages, if you defeat the purse snatchers and stuff, they'll come up to you and say thank you, and they'll throw a little inspiration in there, right? And it's basically you're, you feel inspired by having helped an innocent person. And it gives you the courage to fight on, essentially. Okay, so we have to destroy four scanners. These are usually around the edges. Up on the hills, yep, there's one. Don't know that we have to defeat anybody, just destroy the scanners. There's one over there, hopefully. When we click this one, the fourth one will pop up on our map. But first, we're going to aggro these guys. We may as well defeat them. One more. There we go. Mission complete. And on to the next part. I feel like this is the one that leads to the army that's being planning to come in here and you have to go stop them. I remember doing that with Silver Phoenix. And I think with Quintessence Lass. And I think with Tiger Shrike. Part 3. Um, scanner couldn't locate... We couldn't locate, just started transmitting. Defeat the Praetorians. So there's going to be more than one of them. And destroy the stolen scanner. Is this where we fight the evil Miss Liberty? I think there is one where you do. Into the sewers. Much cleaner sewers in um, 
Praetoria than in Paragon City. Okay, so what's the story? Do we have to defeat all of these guys? Probably not. Well, that is a very long range aggro. Clicking on these powers and they're not activating. There's no lag. Guess I'm just not clicking right. So, guys, one of the things I've uh, talked about is that I might want to try some Planet Coaster, and I I would dearly love to. Um, but you know, I'm starting to reconsider, even if it does go on sale. Um, one of the things that uh, I've been doing is watching, there's this really cool, from, I don't know, a year, a year and a half ago, there's a, a, a guy who does a lot of games on his channel, and I get as much bigger than this channel, and he's got uh, a bunch of followers and his own Discord and stuff. And in, uh, at one point, what he and a couple of the people on the Discord did was they set up a park that was like a community park, and they had like 80 or 90 different buildings and 20 or 30 different rides. And what they did was they pretty much created a sign-up sheet and they farmed out all of the different plots to different members of the community. And then um, they built a giant mega park. And as they were doing it, and it looked really cool and everything, uh, but they were the two lead guys were working together on like cleaning up after the buildings were all in. They were doing like the last cleanup, and I guess they were passing the file back and forth. And the one guy did most of the cleanup, and they said he had like an eight thousand dollar rig, and he gets ten or fifteen FPS, maybe ten FPS per uh, uh, better than the I guess the guy who runs the channel. Because the guy who runs the channel has a $4,000 computer. Now, this is like a year or two ago. It sounds like the guy with the $4,000 computer, his computer is similar to mine, but I have a better graphics card. But they were talking about how once you get, you know, how hard mega parks are in Planet Coaster because it kills your frame rate. And um, it doesn't take that many items to start affecting the frame rate really badly. And so um, as they were talking about it, the other guy was talking about the engine and how the engine that Frontier uses for uh, Planet Coaster, whatever that engine is, maybe it's proprietary or whatever, it's just not that efficient. And the, apparently the engine they use for Planet Zoo is, I think they said the Unreal Engine, which is a much more efficient engine and can handle a lot more assets before it starts to slow down. There is an elite boss right there, Nightstar. Let's see if we can get this guy to come over here without Nightstar. Is Nightstar coming? No, he's not. Okay, good. Um, so they were saying you can get a lot more assets into the zoo, in Planet Zoo, than you can into the coaster park in Planet Coaster. So I thought, well, if that's true, maybe I should just stick to Planet Zoo. I had a lot of problems with it, but maybe I should try it out, you know. And they were saying, if there ever is a Planet Coaster 2, and nobody knows if there will be, they were hoping that they'd use a different engine that is more efficient. But right now, the one they have isn't very. Right, so this guy is throwing energy at us, which is not our best, but we have some defense and resistance against it. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting a lot of lag here. 
clicking on stuff and then like the thing I clicked three clicks ago is lighting up. But it's not showing any on the net stats, the net graph. We managed to dizzy him a couple times, didn't we? An elite boss, not bad. Alright, now we would like to try and get some more uh, luck back and uh, maybe another red pill, but we'll see. See what happens. There we go, we got some. Just need, We're just down one luck, basically. I'll take that. Oh, they are debuffing my defense quite a bit. And it looks like they're doing a full-on debuff of everything. Not just of one type. Oh, and somebody today, um, I guess based on a comment I made on Professor Dungeon Master's channel about how I had a channel, and so Professor Dungeon Master was complaining because he said some issues with YouTube, and I just said, <coughs> I have had repeated issues with comments that I know exist vanishing, even sometimes comments that I have responded to, and both the comment and my reply is gone. Um... I've had this happen a number of times with Kiovar. Is that an elite boss? That's oh, just a lieutenant. Okay, I've had this happen a number of times with Kiovar, and, and we never did figure out why it occurred. Um, it happened back when I was doing, I think, Nightmare Last. And it has happened a couple of times with this character, where he's made a comment, and then it vanishes. And, you know, it'll tell me, YouTube will tell me you have, you know, 17 comments on this page, and I only see four. And I know the rest of the comments are me and Kiovar, you know, talking, he, he posts, I reply, he posts, I reply. And I, so I know that we've made these, we've had this conversation back and forth, but it's not there. I can't see my comments. I can't see them in the comments tab within my, you know, uh, profile or whatever. I can't see them on the page of the video. Even it'll say, you know, 12 comments and there's only three. Well, where are the other nine? I have no idea. I can't find them. It's just buggy. Uh, so anyway, I guess because I mentioned that I had a channel, somebody checked it out, and they found... Um, and so if you're listening, I, I doubt it, but uh, this person found my... Uh, was it Iron Sworn or my Starforged playthrough? I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm excited. And I do want to warn people, I don't make that content anymore. All right, I did Iron Sword, I did Star Forged. It was fun, but I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm doing City of Heroes now. So um, hopefully that does, doesn't disappoint anybody. If you're a new subscriber, you're not going to be getting more of that content. Now there's a ton of old content because I'd like 25 episodes of Iron Sworn and 30 or 40 episodes of Star Forged, and they're each like 45 minutes or so long. So you have like 50 hours of content to listen to, something like that. But I do want a fair warning, admit, I'm not making any more of the, that content. So I don't want anybody to feel like they've been bait and switched. Now, I do a lot of discussion and talking about role-playing games in my City of Heroes playthroughs. And, in fact, I talked about what Professor Dungeon Master has talked about uh, in his channel a few times right here uh, with the Liberty Last playthrough. So if you want that kind of content, it is here. But I'm, I don't want anyone to subscribe thinking they're going to get more Iron Sworn or Starforged. I'm not, I'm not planning to do that. Now, maybe, maybe, perhaps, when the new edition of Iron Sworn comes out, because I think it is, depending on how the combat rules work, I might be willing to do another one then. But it really will require a very dramatic change to how combat works, because currently, although I love the narrative tools the oracles and the way you build stories and stuff in Ironsworn, I do not like the combat system. 
and I think also the uh, it's, I don't know, it's not called the dramatic task, but the thing that's like scene challenge, yeah, uh, that's like a skill challenge or dramatic task. I feel like that needs some tweaking as well. I think he did tweak it um, after Starforge came out. He suggested some tweaks, uh, Sean Tompkin, but I um, I don't remember now. I know there was some tweaking to it, and in fact, I was talking about it on the Discord, and a bunch of people were saying they didn't do them because they felt like almost like they weren't worth doing because it was almost impossible to actually pass a scene challenge if you follow the rules. And um, I said, well, here's how I do it. And I think at one point he even DM'd me and said, um, how did you say you did it again? And I like, explained what I did. And he said, oh, that sounds like a cool idea. And then he came up with, it wasn't what I did, but it was sort of a tweak based on what I had done and posted it. And I used it and tried it and thought it was pretty good or you know, something like that. But... Um, so I mean, maybe scene challenges are better now, but I did, didn't really like the way combat was worked. And uh, the other thing I felt was a problem with Star Forge is the difficulty. Um, I feel like the the epic and extreme versions of things are incredibly long, and I don't know what to do about that, right? Because the difficulty is increasing the chance you're going to get failures, right? So you need more rolls to get the checkboxes. Um, but I know that, you know, I don't mind. I think the difficulty going up to Epic is fine for quests, right? You just look more parts to the quest. But what I found was, like, Epic Delves. Anything, anything above, what's the middle one where you get one box per um, formidable? Right, it goes troublesome. You get four boxes checked out of ten for completing something. Dangerous, you get two boxes. Formidable is one. Um, extreme is half a box, and uh, epic is a quarter of a box. I felt like in delves, for example, why is this a door? Leads to nowhere. Uh, in delves, for example, I felt like um, the delves became repetitive. Also, the vaults, which are like delves in Star Forge, became super repetitive. After, you know, if you went anything above dangerous, really, formidable is like about as much as you could do. Now, a lot of that, you know, the narrative depends on your own creativity, but I felt like I was getting a lot of repeat results on the table, right? And so. The tables just don't have enough variety in them to sustain something like an epic journey because you're just going to start getting repeats of things. And um, so I don't know what to do about that because I feel like to some degree the difficulty needs to be there for all of those things. But on the other hand, I found myself really struggling with coming up with new ways to interpret the exact same result on the table the third or fourth time in a row. And... And that was entirely caused by how many times you're rolling on the table. And I think combat is the same way, right? Fighting anything above a formidable foe became very repetitive. It's sort of like here in City of Heroes, where you're fighting an elite boss, and they have a huge amount of resistance, and they can't kill you, and you're just fighting, and the same, you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again for like four solid minutes before you finally defeat the villain. It's longer doesn't necessarily make it more fun which is weird for me to say because usually if i'm enjoying something i want it to last because i want to sink my teeth into it right but more of the same thing doesn't necessarily make it better right you might enjoy a piece of chocolate cake but having 10 pieces of chocolate cake in a row you know for every meal 10 times in a row is gonna you're gonna get tired of it right and it's the same thing and so anyway so it, it back to Star Forge, Iron Sworn. There are multiple reasons why I stopped doing those narratives. Some of it just had to do with trying to do it in the VTT and maintain the VTT for that while I was trying to run the VTT for my D&D group or eventually my um, Savage Worlds group. But a lot of it was, A, I did not find the combat that enjoyable. It, Star Forge is better than Iron Sworn in a lot of ways, but still not... It's It's and, and I don't think Iron Sworn will ever be the sort of combat that I really like, because I like 
sort of crunchy, gritty, uh, not gritty, but gridded, like on a, on a grid, uh, types of combat where you know exactly how far you are from the enemy matters and encumbrance matters and how much ammo you have in your gun or how many arrows you have in your quiver matters. Like, I like that and none of that is really explicit. You can, you can turn the narrative into that if you want, but none of it's really explicitly defined in Starforged and I prefer that so um, that's one of the problems is the combat and then the other problem is what do you do about extreme and epic journeys and um, extreme and epic delves and vaults because I felt like those got very monotonous to the point where I was starting to get bored with the journey and the more dangerous things shouldn't be more boring all right, what do we have here? We have Bobcat. Do we have anybody else? It looks like there's another arrow there, but I only see her. There's a Glowy. We can click that. And now we just have to defeat Bobcat. So anyway, um, my hope is that any new subscribers who come to the channel will like the content that we're doing. And I worry that somebody watching the old content that I don't do anymore might feel misled. So I just want to make sure if anybody's watching this video, having come thinking they're going to get more Star Force Ryan Sworn, that they don't uh, have any misconceptions. We're doing just City of Heroes here. If they get really into it and I start getting better at it, we might do something like Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster, but we're not going to be doing tabletop solo RPGs. I, I'm just not as good at it as people like Kill Ten Rats or uh, Trevor Duvall, both of whom, by the way, have new plays out. Uh, I, that's one of my jobs this summer is to go watch all the me, myself, and die that I've for, that I've not had time for, and I haven't had a chance yet. So hope, maybe I'll do that at my sister's in the evening when I'm uh, kind of confined to my room and not confined, but you know, I go to my room when the kids go to bed and stuff, so I don't wake them up or whatever, and then I put my headphones in and listen to something on YouTube and what have you. And um, Yeah, we're only doing like six damage at a time to her because of her moment of glory here. Which is super annoying, but nothing I can do about it. Anyway, one of the things I can hopefully do at my sister's house is catch up on Me, Myself, and Die, and Kill Ten Rats has this new one using the Black Sword hack or something, so I definitely want to try that. We got her even through Moment of Glory, and that gets us a clue, and out we go. Okay, so now we got to go to Tina McIntyre, who's right out here, and that's perfect because we got to talk to her to get more inspirations. Because again, there are usually elite bosses at the ends of most of these missions. And she's right here. So, Tina, I need three more respites. A yellow and a red. And a bunch of purples. And we can sell that. We have a bunch of other crap we don't need, don't we? Okay, that is resist damage. Wow. Okay. Sniper attacks. Okay, we get rid of that. Range damage. We don't need that. Hold, we don't need that. Sleep, we don't need that. We don't need that. We 
We don't need that. We don't need that. Artillery, we don't need that. Defense debuff, we don't need. Pet damage, we definitely don't need. And we don't need knockback. So there we go. That gets some recipes out of our inventory. How are we doing on time, guys? Let's do one more mission. Oh, Neutron. Neuron, he is tough. Should I switch this to plus one? Let's try it. Um, if we fail, I probably won't retry it this episode. Um, we'll see. It's getting kind of late, and I do need to finish packing and everything because I am leaving for my sister's house tomorrow morning. So. I don't have infinite time. Lead Vanguard software and defeat Neuron. Yeah, I just don't know if we can get him if he's 51. Right? It's a plus two. It could he could be plus three. We might be able to get him at 51. We could probably beat him at 40 at 50. We could probably beat him at 49. I don't know if we're gonna be able to beat him at 51. Yeah, so if you're new to the channel, um, we play City of Heroes here and some other games. Uh, we also talk about role-playing games, and I do what I call rants, where I'm just talking about various, sometimes touchy subjects in role-playing games, like, you know, whether it's okay if orcs are evil uh, as a race, and that kind of thing, and, um, and... We talk about other stuff like the role-playing game business and that sort of thing. Some of it is stuff that's touched on by Professor Dungeon Master and others like him. Often, that's where I get my ideas from him or from Luke Hart of the Dungeon Lair of the DM Lair. Sometimes other people. We talk about role-playing games because, in its own way, COH is, at its heart, a role-playing game, although it's more of a computer game than a role-playing game in the sense that RPGs are more kind of the tabletop experience, and as you can see, I'm not really playing a role here, I'm just beating up bad guys. Is there another door here? There is. I don't know which door is going to lead us to Neuron. Plus we need Glowy, so we can't really leave any stone unturned. I don't think we need to defeat all these guys. Um, but I attacked these guys because they were going to aggro when we ran out the door, so we may as well fight them. And then the other guys will probably aggro to me. Maybe not. Well, maybe we've already purged the software because that is no longer listed as a goal. Just defeat Neuron.
I have to say, one of the things I'm going to be to miss the most about home when I'm visiting my sister is this, playing City of Heroes. Can't realistically do that at her house. Uh, okay, we're going backwards now. So we need to go this way? No, because there's no exit here. This way. Out here, maybe? Ah. So the blue lights mean you go through the door, the red lights mean you can't. Right, the blue is unlocked and the red is locked. So basically the red, they're not locked doors, right? It's basically a wall that looks like a locked door because there's nothing behind it on the map. Right, it's not like if you found a way to unlock it, you could go through it. It's just cosmetic. Okay, I stopped there because this looks like the kind of room you'd find a boss in. It's different from the others, but... Nope. Just a lieutenant. And everything in here so far... Oh, well, not everything. A lot of things have been plus one. So they're all plus three to me. So if Neuron's plus three, we may not be able to beat him. And this is a large base, so I don't know if I'm going to have time to redo it. Tonight. Lock doors again that you cannot go through. He might be in here. Yeah, this is a prison, and I think he's in here. Okay, well... If he is, possibly we're okay. These guys are only plus two to us. Gotta tell you, it's embarrassing. When Liberty Last does a huge jump up, slams down, and misses. He's not in here. I know there's somebody you fight in a prison. Maybe it's not Neuron. I could have sworn you fought Neuron in a hallway somewhere. Like on a lab map. But maybe not. There he is. Nobody else around him. Now, we probably are going to have to defeat all the guys in this room. But at least he's by himself. All right. Here we go. Let's see if we can take him, he's plus two. Man, self park barely moved with those big blows. Okay, so he's gonna be trying to drain my endurance. So we need an extra luck to try and see if we can make him miss. Because the more he hits, the more endurance we're going to get drained of. Yeah, he's really getting me with that. Trying to make him miss it. But it's so hard, because the elite bosses have such a high chance to hit you anyway. We disoriented him. Wow, we disoriented an elite boss, guys. That's the second time tonight. That is pretty good. Got 
Gotta take every enhanced inspiration we've got to do it. But we got him at plus two. Not too bad, guys. Mission complete. Neuron is defeated. And I think that is going to be it for tonight. Let's call our contact. And there are more missions to do in the Heroes Epic. I think this is another one that's about 10 parts. But we will do that when I get back from vacation. Now, hopefully there won't be any big breaks in the videos because I posted a number of them to post like every couple days. So hopefully when I come back, I will post this one because I don't think I'll have time to post it tonight for f the future. But I've got stuff lined up all the way to the 17th or the 18th of June, and I should be back around the 21st. So hopefully there won't be any big gaps, and I hope you've enjoyed. And until next time, I am Scrapperlock, and this has been City of Heroes.